In this video, you're going to learn how to analyze a website. One of my students wanted me to take a look at her website and give her feedback. So here goes. The name of the website we are going to discuss today is called Genard Galleries. There's this mind map just to give us an idea of how we are going to go about doing this. First of all, this website is about arts and paintings. So this website, Janard's Galleries, is about arts and paintings. They sell as well as rent out paintings to make the walls look beautiful, right? That's the value proposition. Um, so they want to generate leads for their business. Uh, currently, they are serving schools and corporates. That's a little bit of a, an introduction. Then what I did was I went into Google search for a keyword like paintings for sale right and based on that keyword i tried to find out what are the websites that are ranking right uh, i found a couple of websites one of them is called fizdi.com uh, and the other one is called artzolo.com so both of these websites uh, seem to be selling paintings so they're obviously our competitors or at least from Jenard gallery's perspective these are their competitors. When I analyze a website, the first thing I look for is if this website stands out from the rest of the crowd. Is it in some way better than the competitors' websites? That's what I look at. Okay, so let's quickly move on to this section right now. I'm going to talk about the navigation. Okay, so so maybe before that let's look at the above the fold above the fold section is about what you see the moment you come to the website so when you come type in the uh, url box um, janard.com this is what you're you're saying right this is called above the fold um, if you scroll down right this becomes below the fold okay so above the fold the things that I do look for is the navigation. This should be really clear and simple. And there should be a drop down menu that leads me to even more details about specific categories. More on that later. More importantly, what I look for is a very clear, good image with a clear value proposition and a call to action. So when you think about above the fold, I look for a value proposition. Value proposition is nothing but what is the solution of this website? What question does Janard Galleries answer? What problem of a visitor does Janard Galleries actually solves? So that should be right up front. There's a little bit of explanation here, which is not bad, but I do not like the headline. Instead of telling Welcome to Janard Galleries. Ideally, ideally, I'd be talking about uh, my most important value. What is the most important solution that my website offers? Buy paintings, rent paintings, make your walls beautiful, or so on and so forth. You could do something like that. And then a little bit of subheader, a couple of sentences. This is, this is good. I'm okay with this explanation, but ideally I would change the heading. And then more importantly, a button, a call to action button. The user needs to know what he or she needs to do next after reading whatever the value proposition is. In this case, it just says, please browse through our uh, art catalog to peruse our collection. Not a good call to action. Now, if I were to look at Art Zolo, for example, if you notice, there are paintings. Right? It says some of the finest abstract paintings collection and right there, if I like this painting, it's very simple. I can click on this button. Now this is called a call to action. A call to action drives or directs the person to the next step of action. Same here, look at the paintings. There's a beautiful painting. If I were to buy this product or if I, if I seem to be interested in this product, all I need to do is just click on this browse collection which is great. Unfortunately, on Genard Galleries, we do not have a call to action. A big drawback above the fold. Okay, so quickly moving on, 
I'm going to look at the navigation. Navigation determines how good your website is, both from a user experience perspective as well as a search engine's perspective. What I mean by that is that right now the navigation is pretty tall. It takes up this much of space above the fold and above the fold is crucial like I told you. And there is no drop down menu. It's a strict no no. If you were to have an effective navigation structure, you should have enough padding. You look at this after account details, it's there's no space at all. There's no padding here. It's just pushed to the uh, extreme corner on the right hand side and the uh, the cart or the basket is below that taking a lot of space this is not a good navigation menu and more importantly the products or services that you offer must be in the drop down menu let's look at this example fizd.com for example okay well that seems to be taking a little time okay uh, okay it's just taking a little time um, maybe in the meantime, I could take a look at the other website. If you notice, if I go to paintings, for example, I get the drop down menu and it's divided by different categories, by type, by subject, by others, whatever it is, right? There should be a logical structure to this, you see. Um, so there is fizzy.com. Let's uh, hope it's loaded completely. Yeah, there we go. Now, if I take my mouse over to art categories, it's going to give me different categories figurative people human paintings landscape indian paintings and so on and so forth that's not there here right so that's something that you need to focus on uh, but more importantly if you look at the website there is no phone number or email address anywhere at the top a good website ideally will have the email address the phone number right up front it helps build credibility. People want to do business with people. Your website could be great, but if there is no way I can contact somebody, it's going to be difficult, right? From a, from a website's perspective, if you're not giving your users a way to contact you, you're losing, okay? And there is no contact page, right? That's bad. Uh, there must be a contact page and there must be a phone number and email address right up, up top. Uh, there is an email address and the phone numbers right at the bottom, but it's hardly legible. You can't even see this properly. If you notice the email address, it's cut off at whatever that is, right? I haven't even zoomed in if you notice um, and it's not fully visible. I don't know what the email address is. Um, so that's a big, big drawback as well on this website. And last but not the least, search box. You know, with paintings, uh, you, you might be searching for something specific if you go to a website. For example, if I were to go to fizzy.com, um, maybe they should also add a search box. Uh, on the other hand, Art Zolo has a search box right up here. So if I were to search something like Buddha's paintings, all I need to do is just type Buddha and all those pages that have the paintings of Buddha uh, or have been tagged with the keyword Buddha will automatically show up right here, right? So this is an easy way for users. You're making it easy for users to navigate and get to what they're looking for the quickest possible, easiest possible way. I don't see that on Genard. There's no search box here. Right. Uh, that's a drawback. Um, if I did click on one of the catalogs, and on this page, I could see the search box. Excuse me, my, my computer is, is uh, very slow. Now, if I were to search the same thing like Buddha, for example, I don't get any paintings. It's possible that there is no picture of Buddha, but that's okay. What I also did was I searched for Indian art because that seemed to be um, there on the listings. Okay, When I search for that, it's not showing me a relevant result. You see, it says Wolf River, Kansas. This is not an Indian art, okay? Uh, in the description, looks like there was a word Indian 
and it's picked up from there and showing this is not Indian art right so these are just examples of how the taggings are so crucial and if you don't do it properly users will not have a very good experience navigating and browsing through the different pictures on your website so that's something that you would want to quickly moving on to the rest of the stuff content content is the lifeblood of your website now when i go to jenna.com and scroll down right here if you notice there is this impressionism you know this this is a category of painting they have impressionism and that is spelt wrong right uh, both from a user's perspective again as well as from search engine like google's perspective um, it's not going to be going very well with with either right so be very careful about the spellings you can't make spelling mistakes uh, with art and, and paintings or any kind of website for that matter. The next one is title format. Title is something that's going to help both the users as well as Google search engines understand what your website is about, right? For example, when you search for paintings for sale, which I did on Google, now that keyword or uh, the search query will appear here in this part. This clickable link is called the title. And if you have that word right in the title, it'll help both the users as well as search engines understand what the page is going to be about. If I were to hover over and look at this title right here, it says Janard Galleries, Best Art Galleries in Bangalore. And if you notice, there is also no space between those two. They're all just jammed up together. It's a bad idea. Ideally, you should use the keyword that makes sense for this page. If I were to take my mouse over to this FISD, right, this website, it says buy paintings online, buy art online, buy artworks online India. You see, that gives me an idea of what that website or the page is going to be about. Here, it just says best art galleries. This is this website is not about art galleries. It is about selling paintings to corporates and schools and hospitals and hotels, as it clearly says here. But the title does not um, communicate that to me effectively. Okay, so spelling mistakes. Title needs to improve. A brief description. If you look at the website, the images are there, right? There's hardly any description. Now, if you want to rank on Google or any search engine for that matter, it's important that you that you really explain what your uh, product or service is about. Let us consider this example. Let's again go back to one of our competitors and look at FISD. Right up here below the fold, if you notice, right, this is above the fold. I'm just going to scroll down. If you notice right here, there is this beautiful painting heading and then there is a description description so this kind of helps users understand what this image is about not just the users even though that's very important uh, search engines also get to know okay this website or this image is about handmade paintings um, so that kind of gives uh, insight into what your website is about and that can play a major role in ranking on google as well as helping users understand what your product or service is is about okay so there we go that's something that needs to improve on general the next one is the price again if you've uh, paid attention to this part on FISD if you notice they're right here 1990 I don't know if it's visible on the screen when you see this let's consider art Zolo for example right here if you notice you know you see they they have the prices right up front uh, let's go to the home page again and they have the prices of their products on the home page as well now when you provide the details right up front to users um, they feel like they're making the right decision or at least they're making an informed decision from your perspective you're going to get customers who are uh, who are targeted right so for example let me scroll down a little bit there we go you see if i like this picture of the bird and fish uh, it says under Indian national rupees of 10,000, 
if this kind of grabs my interest I might click on that and go further from a user as a user I get that information right up front it helps me decide what to do next and from a websites perspective from your business perspective you're getting targeted customers you're able to get only the people who are interested and who can afford to buy your products are going to move to the next step right so it's a it's definitely a positive if you provided enough information including the prices right up front on the home page and last but not the least where do they serve now if you look at this website let me go up here to art zolo right if you notice right up here it says we deliver worldwide right and if you, there's nothing here we don't know if Jannard Galleries uh, delivers all across the world or is only within the country of India or is it only the state of Karnataka where um, where they are actually located so that kind of um, needs to be clear again upfront to the user so that they know that they are going to be able to get the service or product a couple of other things that I look at are page load speeds in today's world Google as well as users are super focused on speed users will not wait for five seconds for your website to load your website needs to load as quickly as possible ideally within three seconds so if you want to check uh, what your page loading speeds are you can go to Google search for page speed insights right and put in the URL and you will get an idea of how your website is performing in terms of mobile as well as desktop uh, loading speeds right uh, so not really good for Janard both are in red and if you scroll down Google is going to give you some indicators right some hint on how to improve your page loading speeds uh, this can be very handy the next thing I look for is a mobile responsiveness you can again Google offers you this go to Google search for mobile friendly test put the URL right there and it's going to tell you if it's mobile friendly or not fortunately for this uh, for this website it is mobile friendly okay so mo mobile friendly is good um, so that's a, a tick for me but uh, when it comes to page load speeds um, it's not right so you might want to work on the page load speeds and, and majority of the times because this website is about paintings um, it's possible that there's um, going to be a lot of images I mean it's obvious you're going to have a lot of images that doesn't mean that um, uh, uh, it should take so much time to load right you can work it out uh, in such a way that um, that it loads quickly you have to optimize the images I use a tool called Irfan view if you notice on the taskbar I have this icon you can download it's an open source software called Irfan view or if you know a little bit of Photoshop you can always uh, just reduce the size of the images before you upload them to your website so page load speeds crucial okay Google wants websites that are going to load super quickly only then can you rank higher on Google or else Google is going to um, push your results down um, even though your content could be awesome even though the the services could be awesome but if your website loads slowly it's going to have a very um, bad effect adverse effect in terms of ranking so quickly moving on to below the fold um, so if you were to look at this web told you this is above the fold and as you scroll down this is below the fold in most cases below the fold of a website should all be about building credibility building trust factor showing those social signals right and I'll, I'll explain that to you those could be a little bit of um, jargons I apologize but below the fold ideally what you would want is a proper categorization so that users can understand how logically it's laid out a clear layout of images and all that all these are important but not as important as this part about section now as a visitor why should I buy from Janard galleries right that needs to be communicated in the home page below the fold 
right? Why Janard? Okay, people want to know what's unique about you. What is a what is the value you offer that nobody else does? How do you stand apart from the rest of the crowd again, right? So that can be communicated here in the about section. Build credibility. How do you do that? You can put uh, testimonials, right? People talking uh, things, good things about your products or services. Uh, it just says clients here. Ideally, I would have an about section, a little bit about my values, uh, maybe the vision, the mission of my uh, of my website, why I want, why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's so crucial. And then maybe a little bit of testimonials, uh, which uh, from from various people, maybe like different schools, um, you know, principal of a, of a school or college, telling how cool Janard is and how it has impacted their students and um, and so on and so forth so those are called social signals and people look at that you know things like people's um, other people's ratings and and uh, testimonials from other people so those are those are extremely important as well and the last part below the fold I saw that the slider if you notice right here uh, I'm not in control as a, as a visitor if I'm not in control if I were to um, if I were to look at something specific, right? I want to go back to impressionism. I, I have no way to s navigate back to that. I'll have to wait until the slides move and I get to that section. Uh, so ideally, you would want to keep an eye on that as well. Uh, last but not the least, images, like I told you, use Irfan View or use Photoshop, use GIMP. GIMP is another open source tool that can help reduce the uh, file size and that will have uh, a tremendous effect on your page loading speeds. So th these are some of the things that I wanted to discuss today in, in this video. Hopefully you get an idea. Uh, if you found value in this, please uh, click on the like button and click on the subscribe button as well so that you can you will be uh, you'll be able to get to see such uh, informative educational videos thanks thanks for your time have a good one bye bye